So good morning and thank you for joining us for session seven of our ongoing series, our eight part series, the Analytics Masterclass. And let's take a look at where we are in the master. See that, of course. We've got now um, session seven. So let's go take a look at the actual full list of all of the sessions we've been doing so far. And from there, we'll see where we are. Uh, first of all, this page here, I'm going to send out to everybody in the chat, those of you who are viewing this uh, via the YouTube or other recording, it's under Home Alma Best Practices and How To's Analytics. The Analytics Masterclass Fall 2001, excuse me, 2021. I'm going to send out this link to everybody, first of all, so everybody's got it. And let's see where we are, what we've been doing so far. So we started out in session one with a very general overview and introduction. Then in sessions two and three, we started getting into specific subject areas, the physical inventory, the fulfillment, then the electronic inventory, the usage, the acquisitions. Then we talked about making dashboards. Then we talked about making prompts. Uh, then we did filters and functions last week. And now we're on se session seven, which is analytics objects. And we'll talk about what is an object. We'll go through the whole uh, explanation. And we've got here links to supporting material. And this page also includes all of the links to the recordings of the previous sessions. In addition to this, I also want to point out, as we've done in the past, the Ex Libris YouTube channel, where you can find all kinds of interesting materials. And for example, if we look here at the Analytics Master Class, we'll also have a playlist with all of the recordings. So all of these are in a playlist. Uh, here's the full view, the full play, playlist, Analytics Masterclass. In fact, I think I'll book that, bookmark this while I'm at it. And everything can be found here. And after today's session, I'll put also the session seven that we're on now. One more point before we actually jump in. All of the material that we're looking at today and more can also be found at the link I'm going to be showing here. It's on the Analytics Masterclass page that we already showed. However, there's even more material here, which is the official, call it the official presentations and documents page of Alma Analytics. And I'll send that out, and you can see in here that this has a link here to advanced material analytics objects and that's what we're going to be showing today this here so we're going to start going through these everything about the analytics objects and let's begin so first of all before we actually jump in let me explain an analytics object we have seen already widgets we've been made aware of the scheduled reports. We didn't actually run any, but we mentioned that there are scheduled reports. We also mentioned that from within Alma, it's possible to access the dashboards and analytics reports if they've been considered uh, configured as such. And all of those are called analytics objects. So the object is a widget. For example, uh, when I have here Primo Top 10 Searches, Catalog or Activity, Finds and Fees by Library, this is a widget. A widget is an analytics object. When a user comes in here and clicks the analytics and has a direct link here to either a dashboard or a report, that also is an analytics object. Uh, when a scheduled report is sent to somebody's email, that also is an analytics object. 
uh, when a scheduled report is sent to an FTP server, that too is an analytics object. And we're going to start today with a dashboard. In one of our previous sessions, we talked about creating dashboards, but we never made them accessible to certain users depending on their role, and that's what we're going to do now. And we're going to start uh, with the first presentation, we're going to do all of our work inside Alma, but we will use the presentation just as an anchor to make sure we're following what we want to follow. So the first one here, what is an, an Alma Analytics object of type dashboard? Let's take a look at that. I'm at the list here that I sent out the link for. What is an Alma Analytics object of type dashboard? So. Um, I happen to have already, so that we don't waste waste time creating reports in the dashboards and everything, I've already got some reports ready that we're going to put into a dashboard and make available for everybody. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to create a dashboard. The reports are already ready. And then we're going to make it an analytics object so that certain users, depending on their role, will be able to access it. So I'm going to click catalog here, and I'm in shared folders, Alma University. Alma University is the name of my institution. Of course, it's a, a training and demo environment, so it's called Alma University, but usually it's the name of the, the actual institution. And here, under reports and UL, I have a folder here, AMC objects. Who can take a guess? What does AMC stand for? AMC objects. What does AMC stand for? Anyone have a suggestion? Anybody? That's right, Analytics Masterclass. Thanks. A couple of people guessed it. It's the Analytics Masterclass. And here underneath titles and reports, I've got four uh, reports. Very basic reports, number of loans by the LC group, the number of titles, number of uh, titles with a physical item, number of titles with an electronic portfolio. It's not important for us right now what these reports do. What's important is that we're going to put them in a dashboard and make them available for everybody. So let's do that. So underneath titles, I've got this folder called reports. I'm going to make another folder called dashboards. Because we already saw when we made this before, when we looked at this before, that under each um, folder, we have reports and dashboards. We also have prompts if we're going to be using prompts as well. But we've always got reports and dashboards. We saw that when we looked in the Alma folder. Now I'm making my own. so. I'm going to create the folders myself. So here we are, AMC objects, titles, I've got reports. I'm going to click here and say new folder. I'm here on the top left. I click this little thing that goes down, new folder, and I will call this dashboards. OK. Now we're going to create a dashboard in this directory, Alma University Reports, UOL AMC Objects, Titles, Dashboards. We're going to create a dashboard there. So up on top, I'm clicking Create and a Dashboard. This part we've already done, and I'm going to call this AMC Titles. And uh, in the location, I'll choose the location now. Browse the catalog. So that's going to be under the dashboards. And now I have the option add content now, add content later. I'll say add content now. And I'll just make four very basic tabs. Our goal here is to show how we can get this into an analytics object. We already had a session specifically on dashboards, so we're not going to spend too much time on that. On the bottom left here, I'm going to go look for those reports that we just pointed out so I can put them into the dashboard. And here's my folder. And then we've got the titles. 
And then we've got the report. So I'm going to drag in the first one and save it. Then we're going to drag in this LC Group 1, titles by LC Group 1. I'll create a new page. Add dashboard page. I'll call it LC Group 1, titles by LC Group 1. And we're going to drag this report right in. Save. Then we're going to put the next one in, number of titles with physical inventory, with a physical item. Create a dashboard page. And drag that in. Create another page. We'll call this Titles with Portfolio LC Group 1. Drag that one in. And I'm going to rename the first one, which by default is called Page 1. I'll rename that to Loans by LC Group 1. So we'll go to Dashboard Properties here. I'm clicking the cogwheel, Dashboard Properties. I'll take the first one. I've got a rename icon here. And what did we say we'll call this? Loans by LC Group 1. Okay, so we've got a, a very basic dashboard, which for our purposes is all we need. Let's run it and make sure it works. I'm going to click this Run button up on the top here. And let's see. So here's the first tab, number of loans, according to the LC Group 1, number of titles. Okay, number of titles with items. Very basic dashboard. For our purposes, it's all we need. Now we want to take this dashboard. This is the important part here. What are we doing? Why do we have an analytics object? We want to take this and make it available to certain people depending on their role. That's our goal right now. We want to be able that somebody can come here in analytics, they'll click analytics, and depending on their role, they'll see it here in the list. And then the list here of the reports and dashboards. That's our goal right now. So how do we do that? Let me make sure everyone's still with us. It's pretty quiet here. Anybody, just anybody send in a chat and say, yes, we still with, we're still with you, don't worry. I just want to make sure I'm not talking. Uh... Okay, people hear us, great. <laughs> Someone even said, don't worry. All right, good. Uh, so here we go. The first step, we go to the analytics objects list. I'm clicking analytics on the bottom left, and we have an analytics objects list. Now, also keep in mind, me, the person who's making the analytics object, I have the analytics administrator role, and I have the designs analytics role. So I can access this. You, most users in the world, can't access the analytics objects list. They can access specific dashboards depending on their role, but not the actual configuration of the objects. And that's what we're doing right now. So I'll click here on the analytics objects list. And now we've got a list of all of the different types of objects. We can see all the different types here under the type. And we're going to make now a dashboard. So on the top here, I'm clicking Add New Analytics Object. For those using Primo V, you can also make an object from Primo Analytics. So I'm going to click Add New Analy Add New Alma Analytics Object, clicking there. And I'll call this the AMC Titles Dashboard. That's going to be the title, the description, when somebody... Up uh, hovers their mouse over it'll say the AMC titles dashboard created during session seven of eight. 
Okay, now the folder where that dashboard resides is the analytic folder. Those of you who have been around in a while, for a while, who have done this before, will notice we changed the screen here. It used to have the analytics folder and the name on the same row, and it, it was difficult to read uh, long folder names, so we separate them. It's a nice looking page now. Uh, so the folder, let's navigate to that folder. It's going to be under here. The AMC Objects Titles Dashboards. Then I'm going to choose it. There's only one in that folder, so it's pretty easy to choose. It's called AMC Titles. It's going to be a dashboard. And, and later in the session today, we're going to be choosing other types as well. So I'm choosing Dashboard. Now where it says Add Role. This is going to be the roles of the person who will see it. For example, if I want uh, only a someone who has um, fulfillment roles, I could take all of the fulfillment roles, or I could take specific ones. And right now, only a user who has fulfillment roles will be able to see this dashboard. Because I didn't choose any others. I could even say only someone who has a circulation desk operator role. Uh, but this is where I determine which users, based on their role, will and will not be able to see this. And I'll say anyone with any fulfillment, just for our purposes. And add role. So what we have now is any user with a fulfillment role will be able to see this dashboard, which is, got, which is the AMC Titles dashboard that we created one moment ago. And I'll save this. Now, on another browser, I'm going to log in and see if we see it. So I'm logging in here. And I'll log in with this user. And now, if I click the analytics link here, because I know this user has fulfillment roles, I should see it. I'll go to analytics, and here it is, the AMC titles dashboard. The user has a direct link to it. I'll click it, and it automatically opens the AMC dashboard. It's still spinning around up there on the top. There we go. So we took a dashboard in summary. We took a dashboard. We added it to the analytics objects list as a dashboard. Then we said only a user who has tight, who has a fulfillment role will be able to see it. And then we logged in as somebody with the fulfillment role. And sure enough, we were able to see it. Uh, let me do one other test here. I'm going to go look at another user, Thurston Howell. Let's take a look at Thurston Howell the third's um, roles. Okay, I'm going to take these roles, and he he has fulfillment roles here. So here's what we're going to do as a test. I'm going to go back to the analytics object, and instead of having fulfillment roles for that dashboard, I'm going to give different roles. So let's take the AMC one that we just made. And we're going to change now the, the roles which are required for this user. So these Oh, it would probably be easier for me to just get a different user, but we'll just get rid of these. No big deal. And we'll give, for example, acquisition, something that Thurston Howell doesn't have because we want to see that a user who has certain roles does see it. A user who doesn't have certain roles doesn't see it. And, for example, I'm going to give him uh, acquisitions roles. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, so we'll say that this any user 
who we want to be able to see this AMC titles dashboard. We'll say add role. We'll say he needs to be a acquisitions administrator. Add role. So any user who is an acquisitions administrator will be able to see the AMC titles dashboard. I'm going back to my other browser to look at Thurston Howell. He does not have acquisitions administrator, so he should not be able to see it. Okay, I'll save this. On the other hand, just to even prove it even more, Alicia, we're going to log in as Alicia Hen as well. That's the a, a user we often use here in these sessions. She does have acquisitions administrator right here, so she should be able to see it. Let's give it a try. So let's log out and log in because we made the change in the dash in the analytics object. So we'll sign out and let's see what happens. We're going to start off with Thurston. He does not have the analytics, uh, the acquisitions administrator role. So we're expecting that he will not see the AMC titles dashboard. Let's take a look. Analytics. And he does not. He sees very little. And it would be right here after the metrics dashboard because it goes in alphabetical order by T for the, the AMC dashboard. So Thurston Howell does not see it because he does not have the acquisitions of uh, the acquisitions administrator role now we're going to go in as alicia log in and analytics and she does see it because she does have the role acquisitions administrator and we saw here that we defined acquisitions administrator as the only role that is necessary in order for someone to be able to see this dashboard okay let's just look here i didn't even uh do anything with the powerpoint uh but we showed everything we did here we accessed the analytics objects list we saw that there's a type called dashboard uh, we put in the folder in the name of the dashboard. We talked about the user roles at the bottom. Uh, we even did a test here on these user roles. We showed someone who does have the role and was able to see it. Somebody who didn't have the role couldn't see it. We clicked the link there and it brought us directly into the dashboard. So I'm going to stop now and see if there's any questions. Um, I'm looking here in the chat and i don't see anything let's take a look a little more no questions or comments from anybody okay so okay where are the access level granted to user let me just read that again and i like to put the questions i never mentioned the person's name who sent it so you don't have to worry you can send or ask anything you want uh, I'm just going to put this person's question. This person, he or she asked, what are the access level granted to user? A user can either enter the dashboard or not. There's no levels. He can either, he or she can either access an analytics object or not. There's no levels. It's a yes or no, zero or one. Uh, is that what you were referring to when you said levels? If that doesn't answer your question, uh, you can ask some more. But there's no levels. It's just he can access or not. Oh, uh, if what you mean is um, can they edit it? If a user is not a design analytics, if he doesn't have the design analytics role, he can just view it. But he can't do anything with it. Let me give you an example. Um, let's take Thurston Howell now. And let's give him the acquisitions administrator so that we can see what, what his level will be. It's a, something perhaps I should have pointed out. This person does not have the design analytics role. We're going to give him the acquisitions administrator role so that he'll be able to access the dashboard, save role. 
Okay, so now he has acquisitions administrator and he will log in. The person's middle name is mandatory. Oh, on this environment, I was playing around with the mandatory field once. Thurston Tommy Howell. Okay, how's that? Okay, so he's going to log in. So Alicia will log out. Thurston will log in. Does anyone know who Thurston Howell is? That's something that will indicate someone's age, actually. Oh, no, unless they like old TV. Yeah, all right, somebody knows. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. Uh, analytics. And now Thurston can access the dashboard because now he does have the acquisitions administrator role. He clicks that. He can't do any editing or any changing because he's not a designs analytics. All he can do is view it. There's no links here for edit or anything else. All he has is a home button and nothing here. He can't do anything. All he can do is view it. So I hope that answers the question. I think I saw another one come in. Um, and so someone says, let me just put this out here and see so I can read it better. Okay. You'll have to excuse my left to right, my right to left justification here. There we go. Um, Okay, I create a dashboard and add reports, then I add it in the object list, then I add a certain role. If a report has less roles than the dashboard, does the roles of the dashboard overwrite the roles of the report? Uh, for a analytics object of type dashboard, the roles are only for the dashboard. The, the, I never gave any um, roles for the, on the report level. It's only on the dashboard level. We're going to do a report that's separate. If you want to make access to one specific report, let's do that right now. But the, it's two separate things. There's a dashboard and there's a report. Let's do a report right now. So let's say now we want to make not a whole dashboard, just a certain report. We will make a report and we want um, to make a user be able to access that report. I'm just going to make a very basic report, create analysis, and I'll go into the course reserves. Very basic report, just for our purposes, and we'll say I want a list of all of the courses, the course name, the course, the plate, the course code, the course name, and the academic department. And we'll say we want the course status filter to be active. And I'll just call this save as. We'll put this under AMC objects. We'll make a new folder here called courses or course reserves. And then we'll make one called reports. And I'll just call this list of active courses. Okay, now we're going to make an analytics object of this report. It's not a dashboard, just a report. Good. Very basic report. So how do we do that? Basically, same way, except instead of choosing type dashboard, we're going to choose type report. So analytics, analytics objects list. Now we're going to add a new analytics object. And last time we chose type dashboard, this time we'll choose type report. So this will be list of active courses.
List of active courses created in session seven of the AMC. Okay. The name of the folder, first of all. So the folder will be under uh, Alma University. There we are. Alma University. Alma University. Course reserves reports right here. And list of active courses. Now in the type, last time we chose dashboard. This time we're going to choose report. And again, which roles will be able to see this? Let's say it'll be an acquisitions administrator. More, more likely it would be a course reserve something or other. More likely. A course reserves manager, course reserves operator, course reserves viewer. So anybody now who has one of these roles will be able to see this, this report. Let's do it. Add role. And save. Now we'll go into another browser. And I'll log in here as somebody who I know has a role of course reserves. Laura Jackson. And let's see what we got. So now we're going to click again the analytics link. And what did we call it? I forgot. List of active courses. Here it is. List of active courses. So we do have the link to it because this user has the role of course reserves manager, course reserves operator, course viewer, etc. He only needs at least one of them. I'm not going to do the whole test of someone who does have the role, someone who doesn't have the role. We already did that with the dashboard and we saw that it worked just fine. Uh, so we click the list of active courses and it opens up the court, the report here. Okay. Any questions or comments so far? We made two different analytics objects. One was a report. One was a schedule. Well, excuse me. One was a report. One was a dashboard. Now we're going to do a scheduled report. A scheduled report can go either to an FTP server or to a email, and it can go to the email of a staff user, up to an Alma staff user, or to any email in the world. Let's do a little test here. Um, let's take this list of active courses, and instead of having it accessible from within Alma here, let's say we want to send it to an FTP server. Instead of a user clicking here, it's going to an FTP server. We may have an integration with another department in the university or in our institution, and we may want to send them on a regular basis an Excel file or a TXT file or a CSV, whatever. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's say we'll go to analytics objects list. And again, we'll say add new analytics object. And we'll say the title will again be list of active courses, list of active courses to an FTP server. And the folder will be Alma University reports, Yoel AMC object course reserves reports, list of active courses. Okay, so in the type, We'll say scheduled report. And we'll send it as a CSV file. 
And we're going to click this box here, FTP. So now, which FTP server? I'm going to send it to the XLibre Secure FTP service. By the way, we have a session coming up January or February, if I'm not mistaken, on the XLibre Secure FTP service. It's a built-in FTP service built into Alma. As part of the other series we have called Alma Insights, I know some of you are going to the, the monthly Alma Insight sessions. We're having something on the XLibre Secure FTP service. Okay, and I'll give it a subdirectory of um, Tamar. Add timestamp. It'll have a timestamp after it. Which roles? Roles really isn't relevant here. You can or, can or or don't have to give them because we're not a user now. Now it's going to an FTP server. Uh, scheduled. Let's say every day at 3 o'clock. Every day at 3 o'clock, it's going to send that report to the FTP server. And it's going to go to the XLibre Secure FTP server to a subdirectory called Tamar, and it's going to have a timestamp. Save. So that's every day at 3. Let's take another report now and send it as an email. So which report do we want to send? Let's just go find a report that we want to send because we'll make two different reports so it doesn't we're not uh, confusing ourselves. I'll go on to analytics. We'll take any report. I've got a lot of different ones ready here. Catalog. And we'll go to shared folders, Alma University, my directory. here okay we got the amc objects and i will send under fines and fees reports let's send fines and fees transactions for the current calendar year we'll send this one as a scheduled report by email and again we can send that to an alma user and also to any email okay so let's do that. Hold on here. Okay. So analytics, objects list. We're going to add now a scheduled report. Uh, somebody asked about the timestamp. Let's see. We're going to see what the timestamp does when we see the results. And then... Then we can ask the question more if necessary. But we're going to see the result. Um, the add timestamp is only for when it's sent to an FTP server, by the way. When it's sent, um, let me just fill this in, fines and fees reports. When it's sent as a scheduled email, it doesn't have a timestamp. We added the timestamp when it's sent to an FTP server, so the file wouldn't constantly, constantly overwrite a file already there. Okay, so we're going to go to Alma University Reports, Yoel, Fines and Fees Reports, and we're going to take this one here. Fines and Fees Transactions for Current Calendar Year. Okay, and we'll put this here. Now. Which roles can subscribe to this? And we'll talk about what is subscribe in a moment. Okay, I'm going to give every role for our purposes. Okay, add role. Now, when somebody, oh, I have to say here, scheduled report. This time, we're not going to check the FTP. Let's send it. Okay, we'll send it as a PDF. And again, I'll say every day at 3. Now, there's two ways to determine which user is going to get this. One way is users can subscribe to reports themselves by doing analytics, subscribe to analytics and then choose whichever ones they want to subscribe to just by doing that. And that means I've subscribed to five most expensive vendors, which is sent on the second of every month at 7 o'clock. 
So a user can subscribe by himself. A user logs in and then can subscribe. That's one way. Also, another way is me as the person who's making the analytics objects. I can determine who's going to get this. If I go back to the analytics objects list, and I'll search here for the one we just made, from here, I can do manage subscription. And I can either add an Alma user, and it will go to that Alma user's email, or I can type in any email. So here I'm going to add row, and I'll say that a user, Alicia Hen, will get this report because I have access to her email. We can see that it gets sent. Another way is to do add row and just put an email here of anybody, like Tom Smith at the library edu. Does somebody want to volunteer their email just so we can confirm if it really gets sent? Anybody want to send in their email to the chat? <laughs> no. Okay, somebody is. Great. Thanks a lot. And then we'll delete it so you won't keep getting an email every day at 3 o'clock. Um, but you can confirm for the rest of us if it arrives. I'll just take that. So we can put an email here of anybody, and it'll go to that person. So you can send scheduled analytics reports to anybody, anybody in the world, actually, not even anybody in your institution who's not an Alma user, anybody in the world. So now it's going to go to this user, the email, the preferred email of that user, and it's also going to go to this email which is not connected at all to my institution. Now, this email, I just want to make sure of that person's email um, to make sure when we go and check it that I'm checking the right place. Users and hen and edit and contacts. And yes, that's the mail. Okay, now. There's jobs that run on a regular basis. Um, if we, I'm going to run it because it takes, takes about three minutes, and I don't want to get lost in it. Um, these are all of the analytics jobs. They run automatically. This one here every day at three is the one that's relevant for us because I scheduled those reports to be run every day at 3. If I had chose every Monday at 3, this one would have run. So th if, if this is scheduled in your institution, which by default all of these are scheduled, then it runs every day at 3 and sends the report. I happen to have special permission I was, as a special user to be able to run it myself for a situation like this, because I don't want to wait till 3 in the morning <laughs> And then uh, have another session, or we all wait together until 3 in the morning, which, of course, is not an option. So I ran it manually. But it runs every day at 3. Your screen will look like the one I'm in right now. I'm doing admin monitor jobs. And if you go in and do admin monitor jobs and go to the schedule tab and filter it by analytics, which I'm going to do as soon as this stops spinning around, and filter this by analytics. You'll see here all of the analytics jobs which are scheduled, um, and they're, they're active. The, the, that means they're actually running. Let's see here. I'm going to the running tab. So this job is still running. I'm, meanwhile, going to go log into that FTP server because now we're going to have two jobs, two reports being run right now, the one that we sent to Alicia Hen and to Tamar sent in her email from an institution, and also the one going to the FTP server. So that's clear. I'm going to go back to the analytics objects list. We're talking about the scheduled reports that we made today, and we're talking about the ones we did every day at 3. And we've got this one here, the fines and fees report for the current calendar year. Uh, and that's going to the FTP server. And we have the, the course reserves, 
which is going also. Course reserves. List of active courses, again, scheduled report every day at 3. Let's go see what's happening here. Uh, running. Okay, it's still running fine. So I'm going to go into the FTP server meanwhile. So we save time. I use FileZilla. I'm going into the Xlibre Secure FTP. That's the one we're using here. Okay, and boom. I don't recall if we gave it a subdirectory. Let's see. Because you can send it also to a subdirectory. I think we did. I think we made a subdirectory called tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we did. Okay. So now I'm in production. No, I still don't have it because the job's not done yet. Let's go see. Refresh. Okay. And I'll also go open up the mail, meanwhile, of where this is going to get sent to because we're sending one to email. I've got an email where I send all of my analytics reports, this one here, and this go here I send all my analytics reports, letters that I'm testing, all kinds of interesting stuff. Okay, let me just refresh that inbox. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here. Admin. To see how it's running, we'll do the admin monitor jobs. Oh, it's done. History. Okay, here it is. Scheduled report every day at 3. Let me open this up. I see we have an error message. That's interesting. Report. Okay, so we had this one here. No subscribers. Okay, that's uh, no subscribers. Okay, maybe we never saved it. Let's go see. And then this one here successfully delivered to one recipient. Okay, so this one was sent to the list to the FTP server. Let's go take a look. FTP server. And let me refresh. There it is. You see the folder got created. Okay, here's the timestamp. It says 2021-1208, so that's the date. Then it says 0747, which is the time in Amsterdam, the time on this environment. So that's the timestamp. Let me it was sent to the FTP server to the timestamp. Let's just go take a look at this. I'm going to stick it in this folder here called C output just so I have it on my PC and we can look at it. Okay, connected starting download fire transfer and successful. Great. So let's go see. I copied that now to my PC to here. And here it is, a CSV file, list of active courses. So we sent it to an FTP server, and here it is. Now, it didn't go to the scheduled email. It said there were no subscribers. Let's go take a look at that and see what happened. We'll go back to analytics objects list. Someone asks if the timestamp can be customized. No, it, either you take it or you don't take it, it can't be changed to different ways. You can set something up on your own, which is going to do a rename uh, wherever you put it on your own server, but by default, that's that's what it does. There's no other ways to set it up. Okay. Um, scheduled reports here. Oh, that's the one to the FTP server. Oh, I think I I think we didn't save our report properly. Aha. Uh -huh. List of active courses. We never made a proper scheduled report. That's the issue. We never saved the scheduled report. Uh transactions, fines and fees. Hold on a minute. We did 
Didn't we do fines and fees transactions? Um, yes. Okay. Fines and fees transactions for current calendar year. We sent that one. Let's go to the mail. One moment. Let's see what's happening. Too much going on here. Fines scheduled report every day at 3. This is the one we're going to use. Fines and fees, current calendar year, all lowercase, just so we're clear what we're doing. Edit. Okay. We're sending it to PDF every day at 3. Okay. And manage subscription. Someone asked, why would we send it to an FTP server? Very often, an institution will have an integration with another department on in the institution. For example, maybe the finance department wants a list of all invoices that have been paid in the last year. Or maybe the registrar's office wants a list of all patrons who have outstanding fines. So rather than sending an email to them, you can send it to their FTP server. They then go take the file and process it themselves. That's the typical use case. OK, so I'm going to add a row here. Apparently, we didn't save this last time or something happened. We probably didn't save it. Now I'm going to add uh, just an email. And this time, we're going to save. So now this one will be sent to Alicia. And to Tamar, this is titles, fines, and fees for current academic year. And I'm even going to rename this so it'll be clear that that's the one. And we'll call this AMC 2021-1221, OK? This is going to be the scheduled report every day at 3. And we'll look one more time. Make sure it did get saved. Manage subscription. Yes, it does. Let me send this. Then I'll go look at the, the chats. OK, so scheduled. We're going to filter by the analytics and send it every day at 3. Filter by analytics. And again, I can send a report because for the purposes of doing a demo like this, we don't want to wait till 3 in the morning. Uh, but these are not the kind of reports a user can send. They're sent as scheduled. OK, let me go look at the chats. OK, so this question here, I'll say it now that we have a little more time. The person asks, why send it to an FTP server? It's, it's very popular. Uh, and you've got an example here, uh, how to automate the process of sending an analytics report to an FTP server. A lot of times, oh, I know how this actually happened, the, the actual use case of why we developed this. Uh, there's an institution who has these sentry gates, perhaps some of you are familiar with it, um, where when someone walks into the instant into the library, they scan their card and then the the turnstile automatically spins. And they had to upload all the time the primary identifiers of all the users every day so it would be kept up to date so that when the person put their card on, it would recognize, OK, he's in the file, open it up. So the department that was handling the sentry wanted a list of all the primary identifiers every day so they could load it. So the easiest way to do it, instead of sending them an email, and then the person has to go to the email, save it to his PC, send it somewhere else, upload it somewhere else, we send it to an FTP server. The other department has a script that automatically goes, picks it up from the FTP server, loads it, and that's how the integration works. So that's a use case of why sending it to an FTP server um, 
could be useful. Okay, I'm looking at the other ones. Okay, so the timestamp I already mentioned. There's no way to change that timestamp. Um, and someone asked, does the add timestamp mean the report sent to user would be appended date time to its name? So the answer to this, let me put it out here, is no. The report sent to a user does not get a timestamp. Only on the FTP server. The FTP file gets a timestamp because the whole purpose is that it won't overwrite the existing file. In an email, you know from the email when the file was sent. Let's see how our report is going. Running. Okay, she's still running. And we're going to be patient, but let's go take a look because it sends it while it's running. It doesn't wait until the job ends and then start sending them all. All items scheduled. Oh, here we are. Great. Look at that. Here it is. Tamar, you should also have yours in your email as well. Um, so here, this one was sent. Uh, we sent. We defined to send it as a PDF. Dear Madam Chen, that's Alicia. And here's the file as a PDF. It was sent. Okay. Um, and Tamar, did you get yours as well? Didn't get it yet. Okay. Ah, just arrived, she said. Great. <coughs> I'm going to cancel that one right now, Tamar, so you're not going to get an email every day, <laughs> every day at 3 before we forget. And now we're going to move on to widgets. Are there any questions before we move on to widgets? Are there any questions or comments? Tomorrow I'm deleting this. You won't get any more mails. Are there any questions or comments on the, um, the scheduled reports? Just to summarize, we created a dashboard and sent it and made it accessible from inside Alma. Um, and we made a report accessible from in, inside Alma. Then we made a report be scheduled to go to an FTP server. Then we made a report to automatically go to a email. And, and one time we did it as an email uh, of a, Alma user, and then to any email, which was our colleague Tamar from another institution. Okay, somebody asked, does subscribe to analytics need specific role? If don't, do they only ascribe to what they're allowed to view? Uh, let me paste that one here. And let's take the example of Thurston Howell again. So does subscribe analytics to analytics need a specific role? No. Every user can subscribe to analytics, but they can only subscribe to reports that have a role that they have. For example, if I come back to this Alma as Thurston Howell, who am I logged in as now? Now I'm Laura Jackson. Let's first compare Laura Jackson. So Laura Jackson has all the roles. If she comes to analytics, subscribe to analytics, she will see all of the scheduled reports because she has all the roles. Let's just let that load. Thurston Howell, if you recall, he has acquisitions administrator and a couple more. So Thurston Howell is seeing 35 different reports. Ones he wants to subscribe to, he'll just click like that, and he'll be subscribed. Thurston Howell, on the other hand, will go in. He should see much less than all 35 reports. Let's go. We'll say sign out of Laura Jackson, and we'll sign in as Thurston. Boom. And we'll say, again, analytics. 
subscribe to analytics note that he doesn't have any other analytics he doesn't have design analytics he doesn't have analytics objects list just to subscribe and instead of seeing 35 he sees only 27 because he has less roles than laura jackson the person who was in before every one of these analytics objects here has been de defined uh with at least one role that thurston howell has okay we got a half hour left and plenty to do. So let's move on to widgets. If we go back to our original plan here, just to keep ourselves in focus, I see my colleague Wendy has joined us. Hello, Wendy. Uh, let's go back now to these analytics objects. So what did we do so far? We looked at the analytics object of type dashboard. We sent one to an FTP server. Um, this is also about sending to an FTP server. One's a PowerPoint and one's a blog. Uh, then we did a scheduled report to an to a Alma user and a non-Alma user. Now we're going to add a widget to the Alma landing page. Let's take a look at these widgets. So I'm going to go to the landing page here. And, oh, I'm Thurston Howell. Thurston doesn't have any widgets on there. Let's go in as, um, let me sign out. We'll go in as Alicia. Alicia has a lot of widgets. Just to show what a widget is, first of all. The widget is a small version of a report. Typically, it's a little pie chart, a little graph, maybe a table, but it's not something designed to um, a full report that, it, that they're going to read on the screen here. If it, you want a full report, you can make the link like we made before from analytics and then click one of these if you want a full report. So these are widgets here. Um, let me refresh that one more time. Okay. So, for example, this um, Primo Popula 10 searches, catalog or activity, finds and fees by library, these are widgets and we're going to talk now about making these widgets because they're also a type of analytics object so uh let's choose a report for which we want to have an analytics object so we'll go back into analytics design analytics okay and catalog And let's do, where were we here? Reports, my name, we got AMC objects. Okay, let's go to the fines and fees, reports. And let's get rid of this one. Let's say, edit. We don't want to make a widget with a whole table like this. So let's make it. Um, for example, a pie chart with the transaction amounts. So let's get the big ones. I'm going to sort this descending. Let's get rid of the date just so we have something. Let's get rid of the date. Let's get rid of the owning library. We'll sort this descending. And let's take these big ones here. We'll filter by these. Just gonna, we're just going to make a simple pie. And we will filter the fine fee types by that. Filter this, this, boom. Oh, no, not that. I wanted the types, not the numbers. Sorry about that. I want these. OK. 
Okay. Filter. Click the magnifying glass. Click the pencil and paste. Okay, we're good to go. And let's make a pie on this. Then we have to change the size around because it's got to fit into one of these little things. If it's not made properly, there's scroll bars. I don't want to say properly. If it's not made the, the best aesthetic way, then um, it doesn't look nice, and you got to start using a pie, uh, scroll bars to see it. So let's put in a... Okay, we'll do a pie. And we'll get rid of the table. We'll get rid of the title because the title is going to come from the, the actual object itself. Let's get rid of this also, the legend, because we want to make it as compact as possible. So here I'll say titles and labels, data markers, always OK. OK, so now I've got that. I've got the amount. Let me make it even nicer there. And we'll say data markers. We'll say we want the name and the value. OK, so now I don't need the legend because I've already got what they are here. So I'm going to get rid of the legend. Legend. Use measure name as graph title. I'm going to get rid of that also. We want it as small as possible. And here I'm going to uncheck show in legend. Done. Okay, so I have a very simple pie. I think it's going to be too big, but let's start with this and then we'll make it smaller as necessary. We still have 23 minutes. Save. Let me actually save that as pie. OK. Save that as pi. Now let's make that an analytics object. Analytics, analytics objects list, just like we added the previous ones. The only thing that's different is for the type, we'll choose now widget. Before we chose, um, one time we chose dashboard, one time we chose report, one time we chose scheduled report. Now we're going to choose pi. So this is going to be fine and fee transactions. Fine and fees. And that's going to be in, I don't even remember where I saved it, but we'll find it. Um, fines and fees reports. There's my pie. This is going to be now a widget. Now, who will be able to add this to their report, to their debt, to their um, landing page in Alma? Probably someone who does circulation. Um, let's say anybody who can do circulation. I'm going to choose all of the circulations. Now, let's see how is it added. A user logs in. Let's go to the other browser and be a user who logs in. Let's sign out. A user logs in. And in order to add a dashboard, excuse me, in order to add a widget to this landing page, I'm calling it a landing page instead of a dashboard because I don't want to confuse with the dashboards we already made in analytics. I'm calling it a landing page. And if you click the plus over here on the top, a user who clicks that plus will see all of the widgets that they can add based on their roles. I gave that specific one that we made a moment ago all of the fulfillment roles. So any user with one of those fulfillment roles will be able to add that. I called it, is that what we called it? Fines and fees transactions, pie we called it, I thought. 
I'm getting confused. What did we call it? Sorry about that. I'm usually a little better at that. Let's go to all the widgets. And that is what we called it. Fines and fees transactions. Oh, the name of the report was Pi. Okay. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to select it. And now it, here it is. Let's go out. Here it is. And there it is. That's the one we just made. Now, it's obviously too big, as we see. So we need to make it a little smaller. Um, and we can see here we should make it a little we should make it a, a little bigger than half the size based on this. We can keep the the width the height around the same, a little smaller, but the width should be a little more little more than half. So let's see how that's done. Here it is. I'm going to click this uh, view properties. And the width now is 640. Let's make it 340, which is a little more than half. The height is 300. Let's make the height 275. Boom. Save. And here, let's refresh. I click the icon on the top left. Nice. We could probably even make it a little bigger. Let's play all the way. Catalog. Oh, right here. Let's make it. Let's go take a look again. Okay. We'll make this maybe 360. We'll make this maybe 395. Uh, what was it? 295 or 395? 295. Save, refresh. Nice. Uh, so now we've got it like that. In, in a case like this, we could probably also do a table. If we take this, a small table, we could do a large table and then have a link to open it in a new window as well. For example, I'm going to take this and say save as table. I'll get rid of the pie and add a table. And I'll add a title. And I'll get rid of this filter. Okay, so now we have all the fines and fees in a table. We could make this a widget, but more appropriate would be a link to a scheduled report, Let, uh, a link to a report. Let's do both just to see the difference. It's really not appropriate for a widget, but let's do it just to see. So we've got this saved. Here, I'm back in analytics. We'll go to the analytics objects list. And we'll create it once as a widget. So this is going to be type widget. It's from, oops, the fines and fees report. Ooh, fines and fees reports. There we go. And this one here with the table. So it's a widget using the table. And who will be able to add it? Anybody with any of these fulfillment roles? Save. Then we'll also add it. So we have a comparison. Add new analytics object. We're going to add this also as a regular report that can be accessed from the, from the analytics menu. Report again, all fulfillment roles, add role, save. Okay, so if we filter by that here, 
we have it once as a widget and once as a report because we want to compare. I'm saying it's really not appropriate as a widget, but there is a link there to open in a new tab and a new window, so it might be appropriate, whatever you prefer. Let's go in as a new user. We'll sign out here. We'll sign in. Okay, so first of all, let's add that widget. We'll click the plus up here. And these are all the widgets that I'm allowed to add based on my roles in a moment. There it is. I'm going to add that. Here it is. And there it is. So I got a table. Uh, it's not so bad if that's how you want to do it. But generally speaking, it's not so nice to need a scroll bar on a widget. But we got this link here open in a new window, and it opens in a new tab. There we go. That's one way to do it. Another way is we added it also as a report. So here, I should see it also. Um, it's called fines and fees, transactions for current calendar year. And here it is, fines and fees here. So I've also got a link here, which opens uh, in a new tab. I personally think it's nicer having the link from the analytics menu rather than a widget that I need a a uh, scroll bar for, but whatever. Uh, are there any questions or comments now on the widget? Let's go through briefly the PowerPoint to make sure we covered everything, though I think we did. So that's the how to create a widget uh, and add it to the Alma landing page. And everything we did today is in these presentations, which you all have the link to. Uh, let's make sure we covered this. Uh, so we have a, a basic chart here. We did a pie chart or the circulation of the fines and fees transactions. And we went to the analytics objects list. We added a new analytics object. We chose the folder. We chose the report name. We chose the type as widget. Uh, we gave it a title and a description. And we added roles. In our case, we added all of the fulfillment roles. And then we went in, we clicked the plus, we chose the widget, and we saw it on the dashboard. Okay, are there any final questions or comments before we conclude? Let's go back to the list here. I'm going to open up the chat. Anything from anyone? No more questions or comments. Okay, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, and we hope to see you next week for our final eighth session of our eight-part series. Thanks a lot, everybody, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.